George, my teacher's brightest student. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. That would be me. So, what seems to be a problem today? I can't understand F, F prime, or F double prime. <laughs> Let me see if I can help you with that. Come on, let me show you. Alright, so what we're studying today is going to be F, F prime, and F double prime. All right, so we're gonna start off with, I'm gonna write a random, random equation over here. So we're gonna start off with the F that was over there. So we wanna find that equation. If an F of, at a random X value, so we're gonna put F of X, equals, and we're gonna think of an equation here. Let's try two X cubed um, plus four X squared, Try minus um, 3x plus, let's say, 9. Okay, now we have the f, that, this is our f equation. We have that from the beginning. We usually start off with that. All right, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to find the derivative of x. So when we find the derivative of something, we're going to put like a little prime sign right here. That's the prime sign. So we're going to have that equal to, and how we figure out the prime is we're going to take this number, only on each of these, and something over there. And we're going to multiply it by the number in front. So 3 times 2 and 2 times 4. So in this case, 3 times 2 is going to go ahead and be 6. And then to get the 6, bring on the x. And then to get the number that's going to be over here, now we're going to just subtract 1. So 3 minus 1 equals 2. Plus, bring down the plus, 2 times 4 is 8. Bring down the x. 2 minus 1 equals 1. So we can go ahead and put a 1 there if we want, but it's not necessary. Just know that there's a 1 there. All right. Minus, now remember the middle imaginary 1 here. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 3 times 1, which we don't have to, but we kind of, it's implied that it's there. And now the little 1 that's here, we're going to go ahead and subtract 1. All right. And so it's going to be x to the 0 power, which anything to the 0 power equals 1. So we're kind of bringing down, instead of an x here, we bring down a little imaginary 1. But again, 3 times 1 is just 3, so we don't have to have that there. So we can go ahead and reset. And then the 9 doesn't anything to multiply by, so it just cancels off. Okay, so now we have a new, new equation called f prime of x. Now we want to get all the way to f double prime. We have f, f prime, and f double prime. So our next, thing is, our next step is going to be f of x again. And instead of one of these signs to get prime, we're going to get f2, double prime. Equals, same thing here, 2 times 6 equals 12. Bring down the x. 2 minus 1 equals 1. So we're going to bring down 1x, yes. And then plus, remember the imaginary 1 here? 8 times 1 is 8. And then 1 minus 1 equals 0. x to 0 power equals 1. So 8 times 1 equals 1. So it would be, yes, 8. Sorry, 8 times 1 equals 8. Sorry. And so that'll be our f double prime equation. You get it now? Yes, it's more easier. Thank you. Okay, you get it now? Yeah, I get it now. All right, let me write down an equation for you to try an example, okay? All right, let's try f of x equals 4x cubed um, plus 4x squared minus, uh, let's try 2x plus 7. Do you think you can find me f, of f prime and f double prime from that? Yeah. All right, go ahead, try it out. Yeah, you're doing good. Okay. And then double prime? Yes. And then that's it? That's it. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you do understand it now. Well, I understand the math, but what do the numbers mean? Okay, let me give an example using something by population. Okay. 
also a thank you, a marker of a heart. We have a new draw graph over here. The Y representing population and the uh, X representing maybe time. Okay, so we're going to put in this graph, but we're going to measure pop population growth. Let's say from the year 1990 to 2010. So that's a 20 year span. So we're going to assume that the year 1990 is going to be years on the bottom. Years. It's going to be population. Okay, so on the bottom, 1990 is not going to be the year 1990. Since 1990s are base years that we're starting from, 1990 is going to be year zero. All right? In other words, this is our x value, x over here, and our y value up here. All right? And we're going all the way to year 20, which is 20 year, year 2010, which is 20 years later from year 1990. So our x is not going to go from 1990 to 2010, it's going to go from 0, 1990, all the way to 20 years later, which is 2010, so 0 to 20. That's going to be our x, all right? And let's just say our population is represented by the equation that I wrote down here earlier, 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x plus 7. Now what that's going to tell us is, um, well, let's just find out right now. Let me rewrite that in this equation. Maybe 4 blank cubed. Uh, plus 4x squared, blank squared, uh, minus 2 times x, which is going to be blank for now, plus 7. I'm going to go ahead and put the answer right, right around here. All right, so what I want you to do is over here, for, for the x value, we're going to go ahead and find out what the population was at, let's say, year 2000. So year 2000 would be how many years after 1990? How many years passed from 1990 to 2000? 10 years. So our x value is going to be 10. All right? So I want you to go ahead and figure out for me f of 10, which will tell, you our, which will tell us our population on the y value. It's going to give us a y, it's going to give us a y value for our population in the year 10, or 2000. So you can go ahead and plug in 10 into these things. All right, so over here we're going to have 4 times 1,000, which is going to be 4,000, plus 4 times 100, which is going to be 400, minus 2 times 10, which is 20, plus 7. All right, so if we do the math really quick, we'll find out that at, the, at year 10, which is going to be year 2000, we're going to have 4,000 plus 400, which is going to be 4,400, 4, minus 20, which is going to be 4,380, plus 7, 4,387. 4, 4, so that's going to be our population at the year 2000. All right, so now great. We have our population at the year 2000. Now what we want to find out, what we're going to find out with f prime is that it's going to tell us our slope at the point. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to, now we're going to write down the next equation. f from over here, f prime of x equals 12x squared plus 8x minus 2. All right, so we're going to write that down. And again, instead of x, we're going to write 10. That's what we're trying to find out with the 10 value. Equals 12 times the value which we're going to put in here, which is going to be 10. Verify that up here. Um, squared plus 8x or 10 minus 2. All right. Now over here we can go ahead and write on the bottom. So we're going to have 12 times 100, which is going to be 1200 plus 8 times 10, which is 80 minus 2. So with that, we're going to get 1,200 plus 80 equals 1,280 minus 2, 1,278. So what that number tells us is a slope. Our slope at that point at x equals 10, which is the year 2000, 
is a positive 1,278. That tells us not only is our growth increasing, because we have a positive slope, it's increasing at a very rapid rate. It's a very steep slope. All right, so now, the last thing, F double prime. If it's not, if it's not F, is that the Y value and not the slope, what could it mean? It actually means concavity, which if you go ahead and write that down, I'll explain to you that, I'll explain that to you in a minute. Right yes, so it's going to be 24X. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So remember, this value right here is going to be ten. We're working, we're working with the same number every time. So it's going to be twenty-four hundred. Plus eight, which is going to be twenty-four hundred eight. Okay. Now for this last number. It typically doesn't matter what the value of the actual number is. All that matters is that we understand what values is, what sign. Well, what sign is 2,408? Is it negative or positive? positive? It's positive. So what that tells us is that at the year 2000, our graph is concave up, which means that if we were to maybe zoom in on it really, really hard, it wouldn't be going, it's not going to be like, it's not going to be a straight line. At the same time, it wouldn't be kind of, it wouldn't be kind of like, petering off like this. What would instead be happening is you'd be seeing kind of an exponential type of graph. It'd be increasing like that at an increasing rate. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So we know at the year 2000, based on this equation and this graph, that the year 2000, our population is 4,387, our uh, y value. Our slope is positive and a very steep graph at that, so we know it's increasing. And at that point, it's not actually petering off just yet, so we know that at this point, Say we're here tens right here. Let's say this is around 4,300. Our graph is not only increasing, but we're kind of seeing exponential growth at that point. And that's how we can use f, f prime, and f double prime in real life. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you learned a little something about calculus and more specifically about f, f prime, and f double prime.